Hi guys, welcome to Pixel Affair. It's Kobe here. So in today's video, we are going to talk about how ready Cinema 4D is for a particular system, right? So this video that's playing is something I actually did in Cinema 4D using about 600,000 matrices and some dynamics. And you can see it's really sort of impressive. And what actually impressed me was how the performance was in the viewport, right? And also another thing I actually saw on on X or formerly Twitter is the Amazon CEO actually posted this video and said uh, a work from one of our own right and it shows some sort of tablet being dropped in the water with some particles you know flowing and everything it made me feel like probably cinema 4d sort of working towards something particle system and everything right but i'll quickly show how i actually did this in cinema 4d and um, using 600,000 matrices in with dynamics and everything right but if you've also watched this my tutorial this it uses basically the same idea right dynamic matrices particles with cinema 4d simulation tag where you actually can add the cinema 4d simulation tag to a matrix object and it acts dynamically but the caveat is that in after this particular version the next versions it wasn't sort of interacting with the collider and everything but it still sort of works right and that's the same idea i used in the video i'm about to show right so let's actually see quickly get into cinema 4d and see how I actually did this particular video and I'll show how to also render it using Redshift as well, All right? So I'm in Cinema 4D and I'm using Cinema 4D 2024.1 and that's very important because that's the um, version that has like the performance improvement bumped up really well, right? So um, this is the scene I actually used in the original video I showed you and if I hit play, like this the scene with 600,000 matrices and you can see it's still sort of a bit interactive let me actually select it and see you can see you have 600,000 matrices in here let me go back and hit play to see if it can actually move through because i'm recording i think it will actually slow it down but still for actually for our timeline to move and everything i think it's a bit of it's a bit impressive like i'll say so you can see it starts moving and showing something right here right right even though i'm recording and this has 600,000 matrices right but i'll quickly actually create a new scene and we'll start this whole thing from scratch so this basically the thing right let me pause it and i'm actually let me actually take the van's shoe and the van shoe is something i got from sketchfab i mean so you can actually check it out so i'll select the um, object here the vans i'll come edit and i'll copy come to a new scene and i'll edit paste right i'll delete all these fields for now and all these tags as well and i'll delete them all so all we have is just this material for the vans right now the vans material one is a standard cinema 4d material and one is redshift material right and remember cinema 4d 2024.1 comes with redshift by default so if you want to create a standard material you need to change the render settings to uh, the renderer to standard before you can create a standard material otherwise you get a default redshift material created and that's necessary to control our matrices later you understand so now to get a thing working it's as simple as just let's say coming in here and creating a matrix right and the whole technique is as simple as just right clicking on the matrix come to um simulation tags and i'll add a cloth tag and that's basically it if i hit play you can see it starts falling so the matrix has now become dynamic right and it's re reacting to the gravity in the scene right that's all that we need if i hit ctrl d and come to our simulation tag you can see in the scene there's gravity let's set it to zero for now we don't want to use the gravity and now i can come into my simulation tab here the forces i can choose turbulence and let's actually increase our turbulence a bit and also increase the scale a bit and if i hit play our matrices are being affected by the turbulence in the scene right so that's basically it so let's go ahead and delete the turbulence and see how i actually used it on the um, vans shoe so now i'll hide the vans shoe and you can see it already has material applied to it so let's select the matrix change the mode from grid to object and the object you want to clone obviously is on the vans so with the vans selected let's actually bump it the count to like hundred thousand and that's really impressive just because and just because we can let's select the matrix i think it's too big for our view so let's select the matrix come to the transform 
and let's set this to uh, 0.2 and because i have this selected right if i hold control and press enter you can see it applies to everything that has selected right so now our matrices are like small enough for us right i can go ahead and hide the van shoe and we get a view of our like mat uh, uh, matrices like in the shape of the vans right that's i think is fine and that's hundred thousand particles for now let's work with this now for us to get the color of the um vans shoe on on the matrix it's as simple as just like i said you create a standard material right and now let's select the matrix and um, the advanced shoe itself first let's first of all hide the matrix and we want to transfer these colors onto the vertex of the shoe like the original vertex and to do that we actually run uh, right click on the shoe come to other tags and i'll choose vertex color right you can see it's all black because there's no color to reference now let's select the vertex color and so in here you see use fields right in the use field let's delete the freeze and we want to use the shader field so you can see in here click on this one you have the shader field let's choose it and in the shader field let me actually select it here select the shader field which has been created and let's change the channel from custom to color right and the color i want to use is the color of this material tag which is the standard material that we created here earlier so i'll just it, it can either click and drag the material in here or we can simply use the color picker to choose it and you can see now the vertex color has now turned from black inheriting the colors of our material right so now with this color on the like vertex color we can now transfer it to our matrix so now let's go ahead and hide the van shoe bring back our matrices and to do that let's select the matrix and um, come to effectors choose plane effector we don't want it to affect the movement of our object or the position we want it to affect only the color so let's come to fields and the in here we use the vertex color dragging and drop it in here and you can see now it's affecting the color of our object we don't want it to affect the transformation of our objects so just the color so you can see now the plane so you can call this one plane color right so the plane that's giving our matrices the color and that's hundred thousand particles so from here going you can actually select it and you see probably random field right and let me change use linear effector to minus z and you can see it works right so that's basically all i did now from here going let's delete the random for now from here going well, the next is to add a uh, um right click and i'll come in here now add a cloud tag to it cloud tag and if i hit play um uh, because there's no dynamic in the scene nothing will happen so let me actually come into a simulation forces and i'll add like a turbulence force in here let's increase it again and let's hit play to see what happens you can see straight away like it's working and that's hundred thousand matrices right and that's really 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 impressive let me actually increase this frame to like 400 hundred thousand matrices and see how fast and interactive like it is hitting play and it's playing as smooth as it has it's it can be so with this let me actually also add a gravity like come in here forces and i'll add a gravity to it i'll change actually the gravity is facing that i can see but i'll probably change the direction of the gravity to something somewhere here or something like that and now you can use a linear field to drive so i'll create a linear field in the turbulence turbulence and um, field force and now i'll change direction to z and now we can play with it so if i hit play you can see the gravity starts working straight away so we select the gravity as well in the fields and let's apply the same linear field now let's select the linear field and move it back if we hit play nothing happens and now we drag it through you can see it's gradually moving them away and that's really impressive and this viewport direct like i'm not pre-recording everything you can see how fast it's working in the viewport right if i go back again let's let it start hit play once again and i drag it you can see everything works and if i move back you can see it stops let's go again and that's really impressive so that's basically that what i did 
um, with the initial scene I created, right? So let's make this one smaller a bit and hit play once again. Let's play with it because it's fun to play with it. All right. Now, the only downside of this, like I said, is it doesn't interact with any other uh, object. Initially, it used to collide with the collider and everything, but now all those ones are gone. But basically, you get the idea. So that's what I did. Now, let me quickly set a keyframe and show you an issue that you can have when you're um, trying to work adding like more graph stuff to it. So let's set a keyframe for the linear field here at frame zero and let's say at frame 120 a 180 we want it to uh, move through right let's increase the frames to 600 it's fine now if you hit play oh actually i thought i set keyframes oh actually i did i, I didn't um, i set it on the wrong axis so in the z here and at frame 180 somewhere here um, Fine. So if you hit play, you can see it goes through and this playing like in the viewport, right? All right. Now and in the original video, you can see I want the particle to disappear whilst like after some time. And now I, I used another linear field to sort of scale it off, right? Now with this, you can actually directly apply more graph effectors to the one that you are simulating. So for instance, if I come in here and I create, let's say, a plane, right? I'll choose this plane and I'll come to the parameters. I don't want it to affect the position. I want to affect the scale minus one, all right? And let's see, create a linear field. Set it to minus Z as so, well. So that, let's see, when any time all the matrices get this point, it sort of disappears, right? That's ideally what's supposed to do. So if you hit play, You see it doesn't work and even if i choose the linear field for instance right and to get it to interact with it you can see it sort of jack like move in a funny way right so it doesn't work together so to get it to work like that you, you don't apply this particular plane effector directly to the simulation matrix so let's select the matrix come to the effectors and delete um, this particular plane from it let's leave the one that's giving it just the color and now to get it to scale meaning we are not going to render this so let's select this matrix and hide it all right and create a new matrix um matrix um, i'll bring it down here and i'll actually come into the matrix object tab i'll send change it from the mode from grid to another object and the object we want to clone on is the matrix so i'll call this matrix i'll add sim to it we want to so let's select the matrix one and drag in the matrix sim into the object tab and you can see now the matrix one has inherited everything the color the skill everything and now if we hit play you can see this one like it follows the it has inherited, inherited its movement and everything now with this we can apply this particular plane to scale it so let's select the matrix one come to effectors and now let's drag in and drop in this particular plane effector and now whenever the particles passes this point you can see now you can see here it even changes color right changes color and now it also disappears right so we can actually use this to sort of from here um let's it play a bit and use this to move it through if you want uh where is it linear field hit play and i can see whilst it's playing you can use it to move it through to sort of make it all disappear so that's how you apply that technique so that means we are going to render this particular more graph sim now how do we render this and you are going to use redshift right you cannot use other renders but i use redshift in this particular case so let's bring it somewhere here right uh, i think somewhere here will be fine in fact let's make this linear field a bit wider to give it interesting and i think here for now we are just let's render so to render it is as simple as right clicking on the matrix this is the one that we are going to see the matrix one so i'll right click on it and i'll add um render tags redshift object 
now let's select the redshift object and you see you have a particle tag tab in the particle tab let's set the move from disable to sphere instances right and now let's come into our um object first of all um render redshift view all right and if we hit render you can see we are seeing our matrix and i think oh, okay in versions of cinema 40 now the redshift up actually shows directly right but if you are using probably a previous version of cinema 40 where you want the redshift object to show what you can actually do is that you can apply let's actually go ahead and apply um <coughs> redshift material let's create new um, where is it create new material is it i hope yeah it's redshift and let's apply it directly to our object and you can see when you apply the redshift material to our object it's 10 gray right so how do we get the mograph colors so i had a bit of an issue so my machine went off and i had to set the whole scene up again so basically everything is back like i've actually set everything back again right and now like i was saying if you apply the redshift material to it you can see everything 10 degree and we want actually the more graph colors in our redshift material and that's quite simple so i'll double click on the redshift material right and i'll come in here search for user data and you have color user data here i want that one so i'll drag and drop it here right and now in the color user data i'll click and drag it and connect it to our color right and now let's select it and come here to the attribute name and change it from the preset click on the preset choose more graph color right and now with this set you can go ahead and close it and now if you hit render you should be able to see our more graph colors through our material so from here go we can add reflections and everything we want to it right so that's basically how you can actually do use more graph colors right so let me actually move this one on the side and now i can see all the colors are showing even the green at the end here and that, that green is actually coming from the second um this plane effect that's scaling it down if you don't want it you can come to the fields right and uncheck the color and you can see it's gone but if you want you can actually apply it to it right and now if the particles are small as well for you, you can select the or either you can use it use the matrix here um the matrix and make it big where is it this one the matrix the same matrix you can make it one by one by one to get it as big or you can actually control it from the redshift object tag here and make it like say increase it to like say five to see what we have you can see now it's getting bigger all right so basically that's all that i did i mean and this a video i i i feel like it was necessary because it looks like my 40 looking at build up all from i think r26 coming up looks like it's sort of working towards some sort of particular system and i believe very soon probably it will come which has been something a lot of people have been asking for right um thank you for everybody who also checked on me all this period i've never been able to upload and that's because i've been busy and i had a bit of issue with my machine one thing i actually didn't mention is that um the machine i'm using to do this probably you might want to know is um um an alienware with rtx 40 80 gpu so that's probably also need to be considered right yeah and i mean it's nothing crazy it's just a normal laptop but um that's what i'm using if you want to know because i mean the sigma 4d cloud system uses gpu to simulate so that's basically everything um thank you for watching and i'll do well to post frequently now um thank you and i'll see you in the next one